With Gamescom nearly underway, a ton of companies are dropping new information concerning projects and games that they're currently working on. And today, I want to talk about a couple of these projects that I've been following fairly closely. One of them is the Intellivision Amico, and the other is the PC Classic from Unity. When was the last time we heard anything about this? But we do got some new information concerning this project. We'll touch on that in a moment. But back to the Intellivision this is something that I've been finding pretty darn interesting. We've been following it since the project was first teased, and there's a lot of new information out there. I'll put a link in the description if you do want to take a look at the new video that was dropped, but I will be playing part of that in the background here because they did showcase some gameplay, some footage of some games uh, that are going to be available for this system. In the video, Tommy Tallarico had talked about quite a few things more so what the vision of this hardware is, what what the purpose is. And it, it all just seems like, you know, hearkening back to the, the good old days of playing some games in your living room with your family, with your friends, having just that simple fun. And sure, th there's systems out there currently, PC gaming included, that you have those casual games that you could play. You know, we have those options out there. So... You know, what's the selling point of the Amico? Is this going to be a hit? Is this going to be something that is profitable for Tommy and in television? All the people involved, the people who are producing games for it. That is yet to be seen, but I do find the approach pretty interesting because it's, it's going to get people on one side of the fence or the other as far as your feelings go with this. But every game being exclusive for the console is definitely an interesting approach. But at the same time, you kind of have to dig into that a little bit because it's not just that these games are exclusive to the Amico, but they're exclusive versions. So how far does that go? Because if you go back to one of the uh, uh, press releases that were out in, what was it, October, uh, you know, so almost a year ago, going on close to a year ago, uh, the biggest press release they had went over quite a bit of things. And they talked about a lot of the games that are going to be coming out for this system. Some of the stuff I think I kind of bypassed. I didn't really dig too deep into. But just to kind of refresh on a few things, our price range for this device, $150 to $180. I'm sure that's just going to depend on maybe version, maybe the space that the system has, the color. Because if you've seen in that video... Uh, they were kind of showcasing a few different colors, and I kind of find that neat, that kind of cool, kind of going back to the way Nintendo would do things with tons of different colors of their systems, so that could be kind of nice. The launch, and it still has not changed, it's been you know over a year now that they've been teasing and talking about this project, the release date still has not changed, October 10th, 2020, a day after my birthday. I know what I'm getting for my birthday next year, <laughs> um, but that's still there. It's still not going to crowdfunding. It'll probably just be like a pre-order either through them or various other retailers yet to be known for sure. Uh, but that's the one thing I've always said that I appreciate is they're, they're not crowdfunding this thing. Uh, it's just going to be, hey, you want it, you buy it. That's what I like. <laughs> you know, you're not putting down money on something that might not come out or you might get you know screwed over on. The other stuff, the software, this is where things get kind of interesting. All games are family friendly. All are rated E for everyone or, or, or E10 plus. So it's a very short range as far as the content goes. But when you really think about that, and I, I've known people in the past are like, oh, if you're not playing mature rated games, you're you're a wuss. You're not an adult. You're a baby man. And it's like, really? Like that that's the stupidest argument I have ever heard. Go back and look. If you're, you know, in your 40s, your 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 30s. Look at the old school games that you played on these retro consoles, the, the NES, the Super Nintendo, the Atari, a lot, the Intellivision, you know, a lot of these games weren't rated, you know, or had content that was, that would qualify as a rated M or even teen rating type of thing. It was all family friendly games. Sure, there was violence in the games, but it wasn't like over the top craziness. It was cartoon type stuff. In a sense, that's the best way I could say it, I guess. Not, not that the games are cartoons necessarily or cartoony, but like nothing was like crazy out of line. 
and the games were enjoyable. I mean, I don't know what some games would have been rated or what they were rated back in the day, but you know, you look at games like Super Mario World, Sonic the Hedgehog, Streets of Rage, uh, Mario Kart, Super Metroid, like Contra. What are these games rated? You know, I'm sure none of those are rated M. They're not like crazy high rated, uh, you know, as far as the ESRB goes. Uh, and I, I think most of those games would probably fall in line to what they're saying that their games are going to fall into line. So I don't want to dwell on that too much more than I've already have. But I think that that family friendly thing is not necessarily a bad thing. It, it's just more of uh, part of this is the games are simple in a sense. So moving forward, every game version is exclusive quality over quantity. All games must pass the strict quality control seal of approval could appreciate that. Hope they stick to that. A balanced gameplay and design for equal opportunity gaming. So it seems like even in this trailer that I kind of showcased, uh, it mentions that a few times or, you know, in this and in other uh, press releases that the games are simple. Even Tommy Tallarico in this video was talking about, you know, having multiple uh, difficulty levels, how gaming nowadays is more geared toward the hardcore audience. Like everything is hardcore you know, and that's not necessarily true. There's tons of casual games out there, but for sure, some of the biggest releases out there definitely m more geared toward hardcore audience. Um, but that's definitely something I find interesting. The accessibility is one thing a lot of people have talked about in the past, like with these hardcore games that have come out, uh, you know, uh, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, whatever, being a crazy difficult game, and there's no... There's no difficulty levels to change to make it easier. It's kind of a, a a weird thing. I mean, I've talked about that in the past. I think a developer gets to decide what their vision is. If they want their game to be hard as, as nails, hard as, you know, balls, whatever. So be it. You know, they know their audience. They, you know, if you don't like that, you don't buy their game type of thing. So I, I don't really want to argue about the uh, difficulty level thing. If they're making their games to where the difficulty level can be changed depending upon who's playing the game. More power to them. You're making it more accessible to, to more people to enjoy these simpler games. All games are downloadable in between three to eight bucks. No costly DLC or add-ons. That's one thing I'm always talking about. Get rid of these DLCs. We just want a full, complete game. Launch to include several built-in reimagined and television classics pre-installed in every console uh, and over 20 games, including both reimagined industry classics and brand new exclusive titles via the online store. Uh, so the game list has been growing from what I've seen or heard and some of the stuff they've showcased, but cool. You're going to have some games built in and you're going to be able to purchase some for a few bucks each, but therein lies some of the issue that some people will have because that three to $8 price range doesn't seem bad. But when you start looking at some of these games, we don't have full information yet. We don't know what's really going on. Um, but some of these games, you know, we'll bypass. We already know the controllers, two wireless Bluetooth controllers. You can use your phone type of thing. Uh, a lot of cool information. This is all available on their website if you want to take a look. Wi-Fi, Ethernet connectivity, HDMI out. Yes, online store, multiplayer online gaming, uh, tournament play, leaderboards, all sorts of cool stuff. But they do have a list of reimagined games uh, that are, you know, being remade or reimagined exclusively for this system. So there's a lot of Intellivision classics, which should be expected. Atari classics as well. Uh, Adventure, Tempest, Centipede, cool stuff. And some of these games that they're talking about, like uh, with the Intellivision classics, those were kind of showcased, some of them uh, in the video that they just dropped. Uh, and then you you get down here, other reimagined games, uh, Bad Dudes. You guys know, if you followed me, that's one of my all-time favorite arcade games uh, but also loved it on the NES as well. Caveman Ninja, Moon Patrol, R-Type, Kung Fu Master, Toe Jam, and Earl. These are games I think not a lot of people have been talking about when we've been talking about the Intellivision Amico. A lot of these games, Super Burger Time, Spelunker, you have a lot of cool stuff here. But some of these games, I really have to see what the deal is. If you say, hey, Bad Dudes for $3... Uh, that might or might not happen for me. Now, reimagined and remade, yeah, it's not going to be the same version of the game that I'm used to, be it the NES or uh, the arcade version. 
It's going to be remade, reimagined for the Amico. But how deep does that go? Are we going to have color swaps? Are we going to have additional stages, moves, that kind of thing? Every game has to be, uh, you know, different to some degree versus whatever else is out there. Some of these games we've seen released over and over and over again through licensing agreements on either various systems, plug and plays, little mini arcades, little handhelds, that kind of thing. Uh, some of these games are going to be included on stuff like the Evercade, uh, some of the cartridges that are made for that. So the access to these games is out there, but I do have to see more as far as the reimagined aspect of this. Are we going to get an HD remake of Bad Dudes that will never be seen on anything else? That could be kind of cool. I could be down for that. But if it's just a very simple reimagining, like, you know, let's just be honest, going the lazy route, who the hell's really going to be interested in that? These guys are definitely passionate. I've watched their live streams and they're talking about um, Earthworm Jim and all that kind of stuff. These guys are definitely excited for this product, excited to be working on this project. Tommy Tellerico's not like one of those scummy people that you see just trying to, you know, put out a cash grab. So, with some of this stuff, it's like I, I got to be skeptical because I need to see more. But, you know, when we're being told like, hey, everything is going to, uh, you know, have to go through a, a approval process, a, a strict quality control seal of approval. Hope so. I hope that means more than what Nintendo's seal of approval meant. We'll have to wait and see. Definitely very interesting I'm really super excited to check this out for the price point at 100. If it stays at $150, I haven't heard anything change as, as of yet. I'm down in it. You know, what was it? Google Stadia. I was going to talk about that maybe in another video. Uh, Google Stadia is like 130 bucks for a controller and a Chromecast. And then you have to pay for a service. And then you have to pay, you know, $50, $60 for games that are all like, on the cloud and it doesn't seem like you could play them uh, without being connected to that type of thing. Like do you like some of these games I've seen for the stadia, you don't get an offline download. So yeah, I would rather take that money that I would invest in that product and project that to me, I'm a lot more skeptical of than this. I'd rather take that $130 and put it into this, $150 system that's going to ship with a few games. Who knows how many for sure. And the games are going to be cheaper. It's just, I really need to see, you know, some more stuff with some of this license stuff. You're, you're telling me caveman ninja and bad dudes, toe jam and Earl sign me to heck up, but I want to see what these are because if it's not, if it's, if it's not to a certain extent of reimagining, why would I want to play it on your system? So really hoping the best for this. Um, I'm definitely going to buy one. I mean, I don't care. I'm going to buy one. But I would like to hear what you guys think about the Amico. Uh, you know, getting that, you know, he said, Tommy said in his video, uh, you know, that people aren't really gaming, you know, with their family and friends anymore in their living room. And that may be true to an extent. I don't know about you, but I still play games with my kids. You know, I have three children and my wife. We'll sit in the living room and play games, old school games, new stuff have the PS4, the Switch, or the NES or Super Nintendo hooked up, and we'll play some stuff occasionally. Not as much as like when I was a little kid or teenager and I would play games with my friends, but still, we, we do play those you know games like that uh, in the living room, and it's definitely fun. And the one thing I see with this and the games that they've showcased is it really reminds me, I go to the arcade, I go to round one. I don't know if you guys have been aware of round one or have one around you but it's an awesome ass arcade there's like a bowling alley a bar all sorts of stuff going on but they have tons of awesome games new stuff some old stuff import stuff but the games that they're showing right here it really reminds me of going to the arcade going to round one as an ex that's the best thing i could think of going to round one and playing these simple games with my kids yeah a lot of them are like ticket redemption games but just quick gratification, just fun, stupid nonsense that's really enjoyable and has a polish to it. And that's what this is kind of reminding me of. Sure, it, it, it seems like the direction they're going is almost like how the Wii was, you know, more 
like, you know, getting that casual audience, getting grandma to start bowling in your living room type of thing. And that worked for Nintendo. This system doesn't have to be the most powerful system in the world to get an audience. They just have to market this right. They have to get this thing together right. The game's got to be quality. And the biggest selling point is going to be every single game on the system is exclusive to the system. But those reimagined games, I really do need to know more because sometimes for, you know, the games that they're talking about, I think with this system, it's kind of geared towards people who, you know, they grew up with these old school games. Uh, You know, they have kids now or, you know, whatever, and they want to share these older experiences, but with that polish to them in a current generation environment, you know, with those modern sensibilities playing on an HD TV. And, you know, I, I think this could, this could work uh, for what it is. Just the execution has to be done right. The games, man, those games that the names that a lot of us hold on to, that a lot of us remember, really have to be done right. So there we go. Want to hear what you guys got to say on that. I know this video is going on for a little bit here, but the next thing I wanted to quickly talk about was the PC Classic. So the PC Classic was a little mini, like classic mini edition system uh, that was announced quite a while ago, and it was supposed to go to crowdfunding last year, and it still hasn't. The last update we've got uh, was from their YouTube page, and they put out like a little press release uh, in January of this year. Uh, This video that he put out, they talked about a lot of things, you know, questions that people had, uh, what they were working on, the licensing, you know, how they had to kind of figure some things out before they could get the the crowdfunding going. So since January, it's now August, we haven't heard anything. So now we finally have an update. So let's take a look at that. So in their update, they did put out PC Classic end of summer 2019 update to keep everybody in the loop. So They say they've received a lot of communication asking about the status of the project. I believe I've even sent them messages like, what the hell is going on, man? Uh, What follows the current status and the explanation of their delay? So they're stating, which is some of the same information they already shared in January, because they did state they had a bunch of games signed, a bunch of publishers. Uh, They have over 30 committed games and handful of signed and paid titles, including games from John Romero, like Doom. You know, he's, you know, designer of like Doom, Quake. Hexen, Wolfenstein, that kind of stuff. So that's really awesome. Uh, Terms have been reached with major AAA publishers. What remains is for us to settle on the hardware used and to launch the crowdfunding campaign. So a lot of people were constantly saying like, hey, why not just go Raspberry Pi? You know, is this just a DOS box? And in his previous video, he did talk about that a little bit that no, it's, you know, a lot of these games are not running off of emulation on their hardware. It's, It's, you know, being ran by that hardware. So There'll be some stuff for different, uh, you know, PC systems from back in the day. It's just not all DOS stuff. You're going to have stuff from other, uh, you know, hardware and whatnot or different operating systems anyway. Uh, So that was one thing. So why the delay? Operating a crowdfunding campaign is a full-time effort and we're a small studio. We ran into some major roadblocks uh, with the development of some of the other stuff they work on. They do a lot of other stuff. So this was just like... I don't want to say side projects. I don't know if they've ever called it a side project, but they do have their main business that they do. Uh, and they have arcade titles and a lot of other things they're doing. So uh, they've been having like, you know, issues with certain things they were working on. They had, you know, their priorities essentially is the way I'm looking at it. Uh, they had to recoup capital. They've been working with uh, to open an arcade in Baltimore focused on competitive gaming. More about that in the future. If that interests you. Okay. I'm not out that way, but still would be interested in seeing what they're talking about. Between those factors and many minor ones, we haven't had the resources to do the crowdfunding campaign right. So I actually give them credit for that. They didn't just jump into this and say, screw everybody. Like, we don't have nothing. Let's just put this on Indiegogo or Kickstarter. Just, you know, we got this little box. Let's do it. Start crowdfunding. Nobody knows what the hell they're getting. They didn't want to do that. So I can appreciate that. They wanted to make sure they had the core titles for their system lined up the games that are going to launch with it because this little mini PC classic edition is a little different than the other minis that are out there. It's going to ship with games, but it's also going to be expandable. You could buy more games for it, which is something that I've been saying since the NES classic came out. Like why didn't they design these systems that way? Have the NES classic, the super Nintendo classic be their own little self-contained virtual console that, 
you know, how much more expensive would have it have been to add a little extra space on those things to put uh, internet capabilities on there and you can access an online store, virtual console, and pay for some more NES games or Super Nintendo games. I know my audience will be like, blasphemy. We can just download them and play them anyway. I know. Anything's free if you steal it, which I know this guy said in one of his videos. I understand that point. But at the same time, I thought it would have been a cool idea if these companies would have done that. And that's the direction these guys are going. Um, so plans for the future. As a result, we have more time to look into su to user suggestions and revisit the hardware. The machine was conceived as a convenient way to play retro PC games on the couch. But many users expressed a desire to use actual legacy x86 hardware with games they already own. Extending the planning phase allows us to dig deeper for suppliers to attempt an alternate enthusiast model with all of the hardware and ports desired. Uh, this is where I kind of have a feeling that they're going to take user suggestions and get in over their heads on certain things. I think they kind of need to step back on that. Like, take what's reasonable. If people want to play their actual legacy, you know, their games on hard, you know, legacy hardware, let them figure that out on their own. I don't necessarily understand this i mean maybe they're talking about like hey you want to play your games what we'll have a drive attached that kind of thing that could be kind of cool but maybe something in the future not something to promise on now so i hope when they finally do go to crowdfunding um which i'm not necessarily a big fan of crowdfunding i understand with them being a small company this is the direction that they feel they need to go but at the same time it's just like Man, don't get in over your heads on user suggestions. That's all I'm saying. Realistically, we'd likely be occupied with our current lineup of project ventures and trade shows through the rest of the year. Our planning and sourcing on PC Classic can continue during this period, however, and set us up to launch crowdfunding next year. So there you go. Thanks to everyone. Uh, they've got a lot of other stuff to worry about. That's what it seems like, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, they'll be going into crowdfunding maybe next year. If you are interested in the PC Classic, you can go to their website. I'll put a link in the description, sign up for notifications, that kind of thing. I'm curious to see where this is going. I'm being honest. Out of these two projects we've talked about today, definitely the Amico is more something that I care about and I want to succeed. I'm not saying I don't want the PC Classic to succeed, but it's just the Amico's further along and has more names that I know of attached to it, and they're not going crowdfunding so, you know, out of these two projects, that's the one I'm leaning towards as far as what I'm going to for sure buy the PC Classic. I don't know. I mean, there's not even much information here, but there you guys go. Let me know what you think. Really do appreciate it. I did take a few days off. I just, I, I had to for various reasons. Don't really want to get into that stuff right now, but man, I'm, I'm glad to be back. Glad to be back. It was not even a week, but it felt like an eternity. You know what I'm saying? But I'm back. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Some giveaways that I'm going to be announcing. I've already talked about a, you know, some of the stuff, the Nintendo Switch Lite. So definitely stay tuned for that so you can start entering those giveaways coming pretty soon. So really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. With that said, I will catch you all next time. Peace out, bye-bye, and boom, boy.